Hi there, my name's JB and welcome to Nurse JBS Academy 1-9 and today I'm going to discuss prioritization of care tips. So in your NCLEX RN, you would mostly encounter prioritization questions and I will give you a guide on how to answer these type of questions. So I repeat, most of the questions that you will encounter in your NCLEX RN are of prioritization questions. So prioritization is that you are deciding which patient is the sickest priority or most stable. So depending on the STEM question, you could either the correct answer could either be deciding which patient is the sickest priority or the most stable patient. So you need to be careful and read the STEM question. Second, if the question asks for the patient ready to be discharged, it refers to the patient with the most stable condition and possibly to be discharged to make room for other sick patients that needs care. Three, prioritization answer has four parts, age, gender, diagnosis, modifying phrase. I repeat, prioritization answer has four parts, age, gender, diagnosis, and modifying phrase. So for example, you have been given a prioritization question and you have four choices and each choice has an age, gender, diagnosis, and modifying phrase. So an example is, a 46-year-old male with congestive heart failure complaining of severe neck pain. So, age, 46-year-old, gender, male, diagnosis, congestive heart failure, modifying phrase, complaining of severe neck pain. What are the takeaways? First, age and gender are irrelevant. I repeat. Age and gender are irrelevant and need to be ignored except when answering pediatric questions. So it doesn't matter what's the age of the patient, what's the gender, they are irrelevant in choosing the right answer except when answering pediatric questions. Number two, focus on the modifying phrase when prioritizing. So, you need to focus on the last part, which is the modifying phrase, not the age, not the gender, and not the diagnosis. C, systemic beats local. For example, systemic, if the patient has fever, sepsis, shock, local is right upper arm pain, left foot pain. So, remember that systemic affects the entire body local affecting one part of the body so systemic beats local since systemic affects the entire body local affecting only one part of the body next acute beats chronic acute beats chronic for example of acute is having chest pain suddenly after x-ray so if the patient was had a chest pain suddenly after x-ray that's acute chronic is having diabetes type 2 for five years now so the patient has that disease for five years now and that's called chronic if it's sudden it's called acute acute beats chronic remember that next Fresh post-operative, fresh post-operative for the first 12 hours after surgery is critical. Beats medical or other surgical. Fresh post-op is the first 12 hours after surgery. So you need to prioritize patients that are fresh post-op first 12 hours. Not 24, not 36, first 12 hours. Beats medical or other surgical. 
And for fresh post-op, you need to check the patient's vital signs, bleeding, DVT, and breathing. So usually if you encounter this type of question, if you have if you need to choose between bleeding and infection, you have to choose bleeding because infection doesn't occur in the first 12 hours after operation. Infection occurs within 48 to 72 hours. So if you have a if you have to choose between bleeding and infection for the first 12 hours, you have to choose bleeding than infection. Next, unstable beat stable. Unstable patients are priority than stable patients. So I have a table here, which is unstable and which is stable. Unstable, use of the word unstable. That's self-explanatory. Stable, use of the word stable. Unstable is acute illness, post-operative less than 12 hours, use of general anesthesia, not ready for discharge, newly admitted, diagnosed less than 24 hours, experiencing unexpected signs and symptoms, change in assessments or vital signs. Those are unstable. So for example, you have a new admission that is unstable. Those are priority patients if they are newly admitted less than 24 hours. Those patients that have unexpected signs and symptoms of a disease so you need to be careful if they are experiencing unexpected signs and symptoms so that would be a priority patient any change in the assessments and vital signs that is also a priority patient for stable use of the word stable chronic illness the patient has been experiencing that kind of illness, experiencing the expected signs and symptoms. Symptoms, I mean, that's chronic illness. Post-operative, greater than 12 hours, use of local regional anesthesia, ready for discharge, admitted longer 24 hours, experiencing atypical signs and symptoms of a disease with which they were diagnosed. For example, a patient with COPD, you would expect that the patient has low oxygen saturation, have difficulty breathing. So those are expected signs and symptoms of a disease. So that patient is stable. Anything, any vital signs or assessments that have been unchanged, no changes in the vital signs, those patients are considered stable. Next, last but not the least, Four things that are unstable, regardless, expected or not expected, that are given high priority. You need to be careful with this. There are four things that are unstable, regardless, expected or not expected, that are given high priority. And they are hemorrhage, high fever of 105 Fahrenheit and over hypoglycemia, pulselessness, and breathlessness. So remember four things that are unstable regardless they are expected or unexpected. Hemorrhage, high fever of 105 Fahrenheit and over, hypoglycemia, pulselessness, and breathlessness. There are four unstable regardless of them being expected or not expected. Hemorrhage, high fever of 105 Fahrenheit and over, hypoglycemia and pulselessness and breathlessness, those are your priority patients. So guys, you need to be careful in answering prioritization questions with NCLEX RN because they are mostly given, they are the favorite types of questions given to the applicants. So I hope this would help you answering prioritization questions. So guys, thank you so much for listening to me. Next video would be, I will be discussing delegation. And this will that will also help you in delegating tasks 
to the other healthcare team members like the LPNs and the UAPs. So guys, thank you so much for listening to me. I hope I was very helpful to you. You have a great day. Bye.